okay so uh, possibly this is the last lecture for this week and uh, this is just to refresh what we were talking about in the last few lectures and uh, hopefully uh, i think there was some issue with my cursor movement in the previous videos and hope this video rectifies that to a large extent and uh, clarify some of the queries or doubts or questions that you have in your mind so this is a more uh, um, more circuit perspective of the 8 bit microcomputer that we have been talking about and a more clear explanation i purposefully uh, reduce the complexities in the previous lectures so that you don't get lost in the details so here uh, for example um, everything is detailed as it is if you want to make this circuit and i will show you a glimpse of uh, this same circuit replicated in the logi sim software in a moment and uh, this is exactly the way uh, we may build it in that software okay so again to reiterate the components are pc the program counter and it has the control signal cp which will help uh, in incrementing the counter if it is one then only the counter will increment clock is needed because it's a synchronous circuit there is a clear button uh, maybe at the reset or the start this will be enabled so that the program counter is cleared and has 0000, 0, 0, 0 as the component then um, the bus is 8 bit but the output coming from here is a 4 bit that's why the size of this arrow is lower than this arrow so it's sort of proportional i just try to draw and uh, uh, the connection between the pc and the con uh, that uh, the bus is determined by the control signal ep okay so there's a tri state buffer as we discussed similarly memory address register mar it, it, uh, its connection is determined by the control signal lm bar okay and then the clock and clear again it's here in for this register we have a ram which is 18 sorry 16 cross 8 16 locations and each location has 8 bits capacity its connection to the bus is controlled by ce okay and then instruction register connections are controlled by li and ei control signal and similarly register a register b register a is also known as accumulator and then output register is also there okay so all these control signals cp ep lm bar C bar, L I bar, E I bar, L O bar, L B bar, E U, E A, L A bar, and S U are given from the control unit. Okay, so as we discussed, as each clock comes, we already called it as uh, fetch cycle and execute cycle in the previous slide, previous lectures, and then uh, each fetch and execute cycle itself has three cycles each, and each three cycle is determined by a clock change. And during each clock change, all these control signals have to be issued. Okay, so all these 12 control signals, it's 12 bit output coming from a digital circuit, has to have some value. And what values they have is what we discussed in the last class, right? For example, for the fetch cycle, what was the values it needs to have? So that's what we are going to discuss in the next. It's just a refresh, okay? For the fetch cycle, okay, so the T1 state we could say what we needed to have is this connection alone so pc has to be connected to the bus and the bus has to be connected to the memory address register and the whole objective is to transfer the content of program counter to memory address register and for that to happen if you carefully observe this uh, particular guy which is actually the the uh, uh, we call the name as uh, maybe let, let's go back and see ep right so ep has to be one and lm has to be zero the remaining has to be disconnected so you have to put values accordingly for example c c has to be one then only this get disconnected li has to be one then only this gets disconnected ei has to be one so let's see that so this is what happening so pc this is actually ep so let's uh, go and see ep that is one cp is zero so it's not incrementing so ep is one so that this is connected and then this is uh, memory address uh, register so lm bar is zero so lm bar is zero this is a negative logic so lm bar is zero means this is connected so this is there all others you can see c bar it's one li bar is one ei bar is one li bar is one so inverted logic so though all this becomes zero ea so zero so su zero doesn't matter su doesn't matter u is also zero lb bar also it's it's nothing there all right so only these two connections are done that's why ep and lm are only uh, going to have significant effect here so the control signal the control unit has to issue this particular uh, value when it is in t1 state all the time t1 state is common right for all the commands all the instructions 
and then we have the T2 state. T2 state has no connections, if you remember, no connection to the bus. Only thing which is happening is the incrementation of the program counter. So you only connect, only value that is to be one is CP. So CP is one, EP is zero. Remember that LM, LM bar is one, CE bar is one, LI bar is one, EI bar is one, LA bar is one. So all these are uh, negative logic, so they are all one, no effect. Similarly, EA is positive logic, so it is 0, SU doesn't matter much, EU 0, LB bar is 1, LO bar is 1. So all these, so if I put this uh, in this way, though all this has no effect. Only this guy has effect, which is actually showing over here. So I hope it is very clear to you. Correct? And then the last cycle is basically to put that content of RAM to the instruction register and for that to happen this uh, uh, all the other control signals except these two control signals so RAM has to be so this is basically uh, again CE right so CE bar is 0 so that's why this connection is done okay so this particular thing is actually connecting this out and then IR is instruction register so it is uh, uh, loading from the data bus to this so LI so this guy is again 0 and that's actually getting connected here. Remaining everything is made the opposite. So you can see that. CP is 0, so no increment in the program counter. EP is 0, so no connection from program counter to the bus. LM bar is 1, so the memory is not, uh, the memory address register is not loaded with from the uh, bus. C bar is 0, that means this is connected. LI bar is 0, this is connected. So EI bar is 1, so there is no connection from this guy to this. So this connection is not there. Right, so that's a thing. So everything else is not, we don't care. So T1, T2, T3 together forms the fetch cycle. Okay, so I hope this is very clear by now with this explanation again. This is just like refreshing. Now let's again constitute the, I mean, recollect the execution cycle, which and for example LDA. So LDA, the first step again, the I think the T4 is again common across all of them. So you have the instruction that data memory comes to the memory address register. So that's a step. So here again, LI bar has to be 1. Where is LI bar? Yes. So Sorry, not LI bar, EI, right? We have to enable the content of uh, instruction register. So EI bar, so EI bar is 0, right? So that is what this connection shows. And then memory address register, you have to load. So LM bar, yes, this is guy. So LM bar is actually 1 in this case, right? So remaining everything doesn't matter, no connections. And then next is actually the content of RAM has to be stored in accumulator. That's LDA operation. So that's what essentially happening. And again, you can see the control signal. So CE bar is 0. So that makes this connection happen. And then this is LA bar. So LA bar is here. Yeah, that is again 0. So this is happening. Okay, so that's it. And the last cycle in this case is redundant. Nothing will happen. No change. And this is just the opposite. No, no connections are made. So LDA is done. Similarly adds up, I will just skip through so you can see it. So the first step again, this uh, data address will go to the memory address register. Then that particular uh, data from that address will get and stored in register B. And then in this case, I'm sorry, in this case, uh, these additions will happen and the data will get stored back to the register A or accumulator. So that's it, done. And similarly, out state, nothing needs to be done. Only thing that is to be done is this connection, right? That's all. And remaining clock cycles are ideal in this case. So this, nothing is happening here, nothing is happening here. Only one clock cycle is utilized. So T5 state, T6 state, nothing is happening for this out operation. So essentially, the underlying principle is actually this. The control signal has to be issued for each of these T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 states, six clock cycles. And if I summarize everything here, the fetch part, T1, T2, T3 keeps on repeating. It has to be same throughout. And I just put the values here, whatever value from the previous slides. And then this is basically hexadecimal. So five, how is 5E3 coming? Let's to look at this. So this is a 4 bit, which corresponds to the 3 here, right? And this is another 4 bits, which is corresponding to E here, right? And then this is another uh, 4 bits, which is actually happening to the 5, right? So this is 5, 4 plus 1, 5. 
So similarly, everything, every binary, I just converted to hexadecimal for easiness of representation. That's all. An LDA, T4, T5, T6, the control state is different compared to add or sub, T4, T5, T6 is different. And for add and sub, the difference is actually in 0, 0, 0, 0001 and 0, 0, 0010. 0. And you could see actually the subtraction, this, this guy, this guy is different here. In fact, only for the last cycle, right? Only for this, this, sorry. Sorry for that. So only for this particular thing. Oh, what is happening? I think something is wrong. Okay, so this is basically 0 or 1 depending on add or subtraction. And similarly, the out, this doesn't matter. These two, only this is important. But we need to have three clock cycles for each of these, LDA, add or sub and out. And remember, this is the only set of instructions we are defining. You can make your circuit complex by adding more and more instructions, right? You can add maybe or operation or and operation. You can add actually. There's nothing prevents you. But to make it very simple and implementable, we just uh, had three instructions or in fact four instructions. LDA adds up and out and also halt instruction if you want. And irrespective of this uh, LDA add or sub or out, the first three cycles are always this fetch cycle. Okay. So this is keep on repeating. So what essentially we need is Okay, something like this. Okay, I'm, I want to, uh, basically the objective now is to come up with that control circuit, right? Control logic. You need to have a circuit for that. So that's the objective here. So I am uh, using only hex code for explanation further. So let's say I have a memory. Okay. I have another memory. This is not the ROM, RAM 6 by 6 cross 8 RAM I'm, we are talking about. This is a different memory, which is a control memory. Let's call that way. And this control memory has the address something like this. So this is again a uh, 16 locations, right? 0, 0. So this is location number 1 and this is location number 16, just like uh, in our uh, program or data memory. But here what I'm going to store is these guys. So this guy is uh, coming and sitting here. This guy is coming and sitting here and this guy is coming and sitting here, sorry. Uh, this is the fetch operation and similarly for LDA and all others, I have just put some uh, operations or, or locations here. And uh, this is what actually now my control circuit is going to be. Okay. So there will be a memory. This is that memory. And from this memory, based on the address, some of these control signals will be output. So let's see how it works. So this is my control logic. This is what I am proposing. You can have your own control logic circuit. Okay. So uh, just to refresh, uh, LDA corresponds to this opcode, okay, and the uh, ROM address that I'm going to put. So LDA address is this, fetch is always this, and uh, add operation, the address is starting address is this, subtraction, the starting address is this, and the out starting address is this. Okay, so that's what I mean in this case, the ROM address. This is the control ROM, and the address for the LDA starts from here add from here this and the opcode corresponding to LDA is this. This is defined initially in the very first slide. Okay. Given from the textbook. So LDA, the opcode corresponds to this. Add, the opcode corresponds to this. Subtraction, the opcode corresponds to this. And out, the opcode corresponds to this. So this is my circuit. Okay. So you spend a lot of time on this slide. Please spend a lot of time. I just generally, if this is a classroom, I used to actually ask you to design the control logic and come back to me. Okay. But since this is a video sessions, I just thought putting it across to you. Okay. So you just need to design a control circuit where T1 you have basically this signals issued. So very first clock cycle, you need to issue this uh, signals. So CP 12 bits you will have. In fact, here we'll have 12 bits and each 12 bits, each of the 12 bits will have these particular values. Similarly, T2 you have to issue this. T3, you have to issue this. T4, you have to issue this. T5, you have to issue this. T6, based on this. So maybe, I will not go to the next slide. Let's give uh, take this as an exercise itself. So basically what I want, let, let's make it very simple. Basically what I want is, I need to design a control logic circuit in such a way that every first three clock cycles, I need to issue these three. And the next three clock cycles, depending on the type of instruction. So you need to have that, that instruction is coming. If I go back to 
the the thing the instruction register has a feed into the control unit so the most significant four bits are coming from the instruction register to the control unit so you can make use of that and then come up with issuing these control signals so based on this lda or add or sub or out okay so based on these op codes so whether this one or this one or this one you need to decide on the t4 t5 t6 so you design a control logic six clock cycles are there okay so you need to have six clock cycles and for this six clock cycles first three clock cycles is same you need to issue this particular thing in the first three clock cycles the next three clock cycles depending on the type of uh, instruction you need to execute either this or this or this so this is the circuit you want to come up with okay so all you need to do is have a clock the clock ticks one first clock cycle you need to issue this i need it okay let me just draw it why i'm complicating all this let me just uh, make it very simple so what i'm expecting is i have a control unit okay so the input to the control unit is the four bits which is coming from the instruction register so instruction register most significant oops sorry four bits right and then the output of the control unit has to be okay so okay so instruction register it, it is the most significant okay so most significant uh, four bits are coming here okay so four bits are coming here and the control unit has to issue so how many bits have to be here this has to be 12 bits right this has to be 12 bits for us and uh, this 12 bits have to take these values so first t1 first cycle of clock is uh, fixed second clock cycle it's also fixed t3 also is fixed but t4 t5 t6 you have to see this guy what is coming from this guy and based on that you have to issue the 12 bits accordingly one of these so that is your objective so just think about it and come up with your own design and this we will take it up in the next week okay so till then it's uh, bye from my side